Hello, this is Thomas, N1SPY, and today we're going to be talking about airplanes and radio. Mo more specifically, ADSB. Every airplane has a beacon for ADSB, and it's used just to track the airplane in a digital mode, and it's usually used at around 1090 megahertz. The great thing about ADSB is that to receive it, you only need very simple equipment a laptop, an SCR like this, which costs around $20, and a very simple antenna. There's a lot of antennas that can be possibly used, uh, many types of them, and we're going to be talking about those. So, as I've said, there's many types of antennas that can be used to receive ADSB, and before I start building my own, just wanted to say a few words about the other types. The first type is a vertical. The vertical element is a quarter wave with the ground plane. Then the next is a dipole which is two wires and they're both they both have the same length and they can be tuned to pretty much any band and then a collinear collinear is just coax stacked together but the challenge about those is you have to measure them out very very precisely you can see some other videos where I build a vertical out of paper clips and I've built these two types of antennas too So before we get started, just a few quick words about antenna patterns. These patterns determine an antenna sensitivity and where it can get its signals. The most simple is the quarter wave vertical. It takes signals from a sphere all around. The next is a dipole, which is much more sensitive around the broad sides and not as sensitive around the tips. So it's almost like a sphere, but it bends down at the tips. And then a collinear antenna shapes its shapes its sensitivity like a donut almost like this around the top you're gonna get a lot less sensitivity than around here and it bends towards the middle there's one last thing that needs to be explained and that's antenna polarization these three antennas were made to receive vertical vertically polarized signals which means they do a normal up and down but the challenge of this project is that since airplanes move really fast, their signals turn from vertical to circular, kind of in this shape. So my challenge today is to build an antenna that's very good at receiving circularly polarized signals. So I've already talked about vertical and circularly polarized sign signals, and they do differ from each other. And so you need different polarization of antennas to be able to receive them. And here's an example of a circularly polarized antenna. This is called a cloverleaf or an egg beater antenna. And the reason it's circularly polarized is because these three elements here, or the clovers, intertwine and kind of intersect. And another reason, which you can't really see underneath all this weatherproof, is that there are tiny little stubs which make this one longer than this one and that one longer than that one or whatever it's order it's in which give a tiny milli millisecond delay which make the signal look more like this rather than that. So just to summarize this antenna has little stubs which make the elements a bit longer than each other which delay them by a tiny fraction of a second which makes the signal that it receives more shaped like a circular signal than a vertical signal. So this antenna was, an, was originally made for 900 megahertz where drones and other devices send video content. We can make it suitable for ADSB on 1090 megahertz if we just shorten the elements. So my project is to shorten the elements just enough to make it perfect for 1090 megahertz and receiving ADSB. So as the antenna is now for 920 megahertz, its elements are around 32.5 centimeters long, and our target is to tune it to 1090 megahertz, which is around 27.5 centimeters. So we need to cut five centimeters out out of all three elements. So I think it's right about time to start cutting. The way I'm going to do this is by taking these 
and cutting at every bottom of every element, so right about here. And I'll be cutting them, and then once they're up like this, I can take the five centimeters on and solder them, and solder them back on. Easy. This antenna only cost me four dollars, so it's pretty worth the experiment. Five centimeters has been measured and I'm ready to shorten it. So my soldering iron is hot and I have my solder ready. And I have a bit of solder on the tips right there, and I'm ready to get back to connecting. So I have my goggles on, although you can't see it, and I'm going to get ready to start connecting. As you can see, I struggled a small bit with the tension, but I think it's ready to work, and I'm ready to try it out. So as you can see, I'm reaching signals all the way up from Orlando, which is a good 200 miles away. Now I find that to be really cool considering that they're coming from UHF signals and this is just a small little antenna. So anyways, if you really like this video, feel free to check out any other circularly polarized antennas because they're really an interesting topic and 73 from N1SPY.